Stop. Now what we do here is it's looking at relationship window, relationship punishment, relationship price. So now it's a, these concepts here look at the outer individual, um, and it brings the concepts together. And, and it's hard even to see what this is without seeing how it relates to these two over here. So. And relationships. Well, everything is in relation to everything else, so I suppose that's a relationship issue. Um, Maybe turn over the solutions card. Fund adequate women's emergency shelter beds under 2006 and 2007. shelter beds aren't the solution, but if there aren't uh, women shelter beds, then that's a, not a good thing. It's right now in Victoria, there's only, um, say, 15 beds at Man and Bearman. Right. Right on a regular basis. That's not including um, everything that goes at the next to 10, I think it is, mm -hmm. when they call weather this one. But again, that's only in Victoria. Um, you know, the surrounding communities The, the problem it is that municipalities don't have funds to create emergency shelters. And it, you know, people say well, people think that we have the money at the municipal level to do these kinds of things. We have a very limited mandate. We sit at the pleasure of the province, and um, we don't have a pot of money that we can go into and say we're going to do this, this, and this. Um, it's not that we shouldn't have. If, and it's if not I were to write the, rewrite the BNA Act, I'd make the taxation power at the municipal level and less money at the provincial and federal government. But mm -hmm. the reality is that the feds and the provinces have down, down offloaded services. And um, there's an expectation on the part of people that the municipalities will pick that up and we have no funds with which to do it. And it sounds, the other reason I'm borderline interrupting is because it sounds stupid when you say, it's not you, it sounds stupid when any of us say, well, we don't have the money because you look at our millions of dollars that go through yeah. the city and you think, well, bullshit, like, of course you have the money, look at it, it's all in there in your bank account. But <clears throat> it's very difficult to find, um, like prioritizing, looking at, I mean, I had someone the other day say, why do you have all these bullshit flowers all over the city? Like, why does the city have to have flower hanging baskets? The amount of money that's spent on that could house the homeless ten times over in a, in a given year, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but whatever, it's a yeah. large sum of money. And although, on the one hand, I say, sure, let's ditch out on flower baskets every year for every second year and use that budget, um, I think that that would be possible. But I also look at the flip side and say, okay, well, our entire business sector survives on tourism, and tourism brings in money, and the money that is brought in by tourism funds the municipality through taxation and parking fees and all the other regulatory fees. And then with tourism and business, then comes development because people want to live here, so the buildings are good. Like, it's this weird cyclical piece where one thing depends on the other, and it seems sensible that you can say, well, cut street cleaning for two years and use that money to solve the problem. But there's always, it's that, if you want to speak to relationships, it's the relationship between each piece. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense that you could just pull funds and apply them, but wherever you pull them from, create the gap, and that gap 
because it's prioritizing what gap has the most or least long-term effect. And then we get back to, well, we get to 